Hi everybody, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today I'm uh, excited to present a concept that we all need in our practicing every single day. And this is something that will help you tremendously if you apply it. Um, it's not my concept, it's, it's not anybody's concept, it's just um, something, it's just a truth about life. It's about overcoming particular obstacles. This can be applied in really any area of our lives, but we're gonna apply it to piano playing today since this is what these videos are all about. Um, the concept is about fixing, owning, uh, just conquering a troubled passage. Okay, so um, it's something that uh, is a lot easier said than done. Uh, so your teacher says, fix it. You go home, you practice, practice, practice. You come back the next week, it's terrible. Uh, and you keep repeating this cycle until something changes in you. And this is the point that I want to hit on today, um, is that, that moment of change. And uh, just to dive into this concept, there is a book that everybody should read. Um, it's called The Art of Piano Playing by Heinrich Neuhaus, um, who is probably one of the greatest teachers to ever live, uh, if not, you know, among the, I guess he's not the greatest, but I mean, he is top notch along with Schnabel, Leschetizky, and of course, Liszt and Beethoven were the masters. But um, this guy, I love reading his book. It's amazing. He talks a lot about um, his students who were Gilles and Richter, and he especially talks about Richter a lot. So if he's teaching those guys, you know he's got to be pretty good. So uh, he talks about Richter bringing him a, a particular piece, and there was this incredibly hard passage, and Richter had it perfect. And he said, how did you practice this piece? And I, although I don't remember the exact quote from the book, Richter says something like, I practiced this passage for two hours without ceasing. And it was a very short little part. And um, Neuhaus goes on to explain that we have particular struggles in our music um, that just bug us. They're just like this, uh, this nag on our piece. Our whole piece is developing and it's getting so beautiful and then there's this part that's totally awful. And you dread getting to that part and you just hope that it, gets, <laughs> it passes you by so soon so you can go on to the more beautiful parts. And I'm here to say that we need to put a stop to that. It's got to get out of our system immediately. And there is a way to do this. Um, sometimes it takes more time than other, uh, than other passages, but I do have a solution for you. And it's, it's nothing spectacular, uh, but it's, it's what Neuhaus uh, instructs in his book. He says, our practice sessions a lot of time are like a pot of water and the amount of focus and motivation and determination and raw perseverance that we put into that is um, like a burner. Like you turn on the gas to the stove and the flame comes up and however motivated you are is how hot that fire is and however um, long you keep it on it helps the water to boil. Well, once the water boils, it's pure and it's, and it's perfect. Uh, same thing with our practice session. If we can get into that deep focus, that extreme concentration, we can work it to the point where finally we break through that wall and we're free and we can now play the piece and we can play the part. But <laughs> Neuhaus says that so many of us are so lazy, he says so many students bring to me these passages over and over again and um, he said this one girl that came to him uh, it just kept doing this and doing this and it was like she was putting the, the pot of water on the stove and then each day but she would work on it a little bit, but she'd only heat up the water a certain amount of degrees. It didn't boil, and then she'd turn it off. And then she'd turn it back on and then turn it off. And it provided so much frustration for her that one day, he said, finally, you come to a breaking point where you're like, I'm just gonna get this dumb thing, and I'm going to master it and conquer it, and finally you put in the time, you put in the focus, and you get it. Uh, we all come to those points. And it's something that I'm guilty of too. Sometimes I just breeze over hard parts. Tonight was a breaking point for me with this Tchaikovsky piece. Um, luckily, it's not too far into the game. I've only been working on this particular movement for maybe a, three or four weeks or five, something like that. Um, so anyway, uh, and then I, I've spent a few other weeks on the other movements, but particularly on this movement, it's probably been about a month. 
and I've got things pretty good. Things are working, but um, I, I obviously still have a long way to go. But there is this passage, I just want to play it for you slowly so that you can hear how weird it is. Um, it's beautiful, but it's, uh, it's in the cadenza of the first movement. Okay, now you have all these chromatic weird octaves, but there's no real visible pattern. in the right hand, B flats in the left hand. The next one, I lift my hands off so I don't provide, so I don't rely on muscle memory. The next ones are A's and D's. Okay, got that. So I've got the first one. Okay, now I say, now do the second one alone. Now do the first one. Okay, I memorize this until I can't forget it. And it takes a few times of doing this. This is why I'm still am making a few little mistakes along the way. But I'm getting there. This is a process. I didn't want to bring you guys something that I'd played for 10 years and say, watch me fix this before your eyes. Oh, it's so amazing. This is something that's actually pretty terrible right now in my playing. So I wanted to provide you a real life example of something I'm working on. And just apply these same principles to whatever level you are. Don't say, oh, he's doing it with a Tchaikovsky concerto. I'll never play that because I'm on box uh, minuet in G minor. <laughs> And I'm not even close, so I don't need to worry about that. You do need to worry about it. This is everyone's concept. Uh, it can be provided, uh, it can provide help for anyone. Okay, next one. So weird. G sharp, D sharp. Okay, so um, G sharp and D sharp is the first one. And I've practiced these enough to where I kind of know, once I know my placement, um, I kind of know where to go. Uh, but it's knowing my placement, because a lot of times these are all... You know, these are all in random little places, and, it's, and it's sometimes, sometimes they're thirds in the left hand, sometimes they're seconds. Uh, sometimes they're thirds in the right hand, sometimes they're seconds. So you, know, you don't know every single one, and there's no apparent pattern to this, and maybe there is, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, my teacher here and I have analyzed this, and we have some basic structure to this, but it's, uh, it's definitely uh, kind of a development section. It's not like a presentation of a main theme. It's, it's developing material. It's gathering energy and tension. Okay, so going back, let's see how good my memory is without looking at this. Okay, the first one is um, G sharp and, or G flat and B flat. Okay, now I'm not just going to go to the second one and say, oh, the next one is A and D. I'm going to go and I'm going to really test myself and say, okay, what was the first one of the second group? Okay, that's G sharp, D sharp. What's the second one of the first group? Okay, that's A and D. This is so hard. There it is. Okay, so now what's the first one of the second group? G sharp, D sharp. Now let's try the whole thing. There's two more, okay? And what I do is after I learn the third one, I'd go through and pick random spots of the first, second, third one. I'm not gonna do this to bore you guys, but throughout tonight, I, re I was able to do this. And it's a temporary thing, but if I do this for maybe two or three more nights, I'm gonna have this. And it's gonna be mine, and no one can take it from me. You know, and that's the satisfaction that you get with developing a talent. You don't, uh, like I said in a previous video um, about finding inspiration, uh, your talent isn't something someone can take from you, it's yours. And when you're able to do something, it's satisfying. It's not to show off, it's not to say I'm better than they are. 
it's that, wow, I have this artistic ability that I'm able to do this. And it's, it's never really like an arrogant thing because we all know that we're, we're not Horowitz or Richter or Neuhaus or Galels. Uh, we're just on our way there, but the journey is so much fun. I mean, the destination's gotta be enjoyable uh, to be, be able to play like those guys, but the, the journey is so enjoyable. Um, I was in a bookstore yesterday and I just picked up a random book um, and uh, it was called The Talent Code. And it interested me because I'm always um, interested in kind of studying about this, especially for this TV series. I, I'm always looking for new ideas. And uh, this guy, um, the author's name is um, Daniel Coyle, C-O-Y-L-E. Um, and I just actually opened up to a random section. I just read few, through a few little pages of it, uh, flipped through the book, and I came across this section I like. I'm going to purchase the book and, and read it in full, and hopefully I'll have more amazing ideas for videos. Um, hopefully these are helping some of you at least a little bit. He says, in this uh, area where, where, we trying to, where we're trying to come overcome a particular struggle, you want to do these four steps. Pick a target, reach for it, Evaluate the gap between the target and the reach. So um, evaluate the distance you have left to get it. And then go back to step one and do it again. Pick another target, reach for it, then evaluate how much. And pretty much what's going to happen is the first time you're going to have a big old gap. You're going to say, okay, I'm way down here and the target's way up here. And then you just work, 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 and then you do it again. And you're up here, and there, there, there. And uh, it will it gradually accelerate. You'll be able to get things mastered a little bit quicker um, the next time you do that. And so each time we have this particularly difficult struggle, we just continue assessing. So tomorrow I'm going to go and before I even open my book, I'm going to assess, okay, what's number one? G flat, B flat in the left hand. And then it goes A's in the right hand, D's in the left hand. Okay, next group is G sharp in the right hand, D sharp in the left, and so on. Um, so uh, I'm really giving you guys a lot of insight into my problem tonight, uh, and this will be there will be another problem next week. Okay, so this is a never-ending process, but it's great to know that I'm going to get this soon. If you have like no hope at all uh, for your for your future in a particular piece or a particular passage, work through these ideas. Send me an email if you have a question um, that I can help you with. But really, get that water to boil. Um, get it going so hot that finally it becomes pure and you've got it and, and you can play it. And then you'll really master it. And pick small sections, don't pick large sections. You, it's like, think about, think about the size of your burner on, on your ordinary stove. It's usually only between that big and that big. Now, however much water you put in, it's gonna boil that much faster. So if you're just doing this, that is going to boil super quick. That's like two drops of water. How long does it take that to boil? Not long at all. If you pour in 10 gallons, if you get a huge 50 gallon bucket and put 10 gallons in that, how long is that going to take a single little burner? It's going to take a long time. 50 gallons. If you try and do your whole piece over and over again, that's going to take forever to boil. That's going to take so long. So just do little portions and uh, that's why I think Neuhaus is so inspired. I mean that example has so many practical meanings um, around piano. So. Uh, have confidence that you can actually overcome it and then just dive right in and start working. And then also, a last piece of advice, uh, one more piece of advice, close your book and then um, and play it on the piano and then play it here. Okay, so G flat, B flat. A, D, A in the right hand, D in the left hand. Okay, now. Okay, G sharp, D sharp. See, you can't cheat with muscle memory right here because, I mean, it's, you're not feeling the keys. And then, oh, uh, what's the next one? B and F sharp. Okay, now, got it. Okay, so these types of exercises are so important to overcome that problem area that you've continuously struggled with. If any of you have questions at all, shoot me an email. Um, I try to respond to every email I get. Um, I apologize if I haven't. Uh, just send me another email if you haven't gotten a response. Um, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I feel very privileged and passionate to be able to share this knowledge. Also, if you're interested in online lessons, private online lessons through Skype, um, uh, send me an email as well. And uh, 
we can, I'll, I'll send you all the information about that. Also to my email, uh, josh at joshuaitpiano.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and all of your support. Thanks.